Hey, this is part one of a two-session Worlds Without Number game. This session isn't a hard tutorial or anything, but we are learning from Jack how to play, so if you're looking for an organic but well-paced primer for Worlds Without Number, you may find this video helpful. I've also included visuals of some of the explanations for clarity, as well as broken the video down into chapters for convenience. And of course, if you don't care about any of that, just want the adventure we play, you can just skip to part two when that's released on the channel in a few days. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Welcome to anybody who's in the chat. Um, basically today what we're going to be doing is Jack is running uh, Worlds Without Number for us uh, today and next Sunday. Uh, today will probably be more Session Zero than anything else. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I'll just pass it on to you, Jack, because there's uh, not much else to say. I think today's going to be pretty chill, is, is my guess. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to be doing mostly character creation today. We were talking about it in the kind of lead-up, but even though this is kind of a, an OSR-adjacent sort of game, and you think like, oh, really fast character creation, you know, it'll be... Really straightforward. We'll get it, we'll get ready to play it in like thirty minutes. It has like just enough build crafting in it that I found that it tends to stretch out more like a, a bit longer. It, it tends towards like uh, you know an hour plus character creation, and we don't want to have like the first thirty percent of a scenario in the last sixty years. No, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll explain the game a little bit, which is that so Worlds Without Number is it's Kevin Crawford uh, who who is Sign No Mind Publishing, who's done like Stars Without Number. Uh, Godbound, I think is him. Wolves of God, Red Tide, a, a ton of stuff, but it's it's all him. This is like the Stars of That Number system refined and adapted to do generic fantasy. Um, so the book, I mean, the, the free version is free and it has like 90% of the content of the paid version and it's a totally playable game and it's really cool. Um, and it's very easy to file all of the lore off of everything and run any kind of fantasy you want. But unfortunately, Kevin Crawford put in a really, really cool Dying Earth setting as his default setting for this game. And I was like, hell yeah, this rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Play this. So um, that's what we're going to be using for this. Um, the setting that's in this this part of the book is called The Gyre, which is... Um, it's like where modern day Columbia is more or less, and that's kind of how I play it. Even though it's there's no mention of like cl of climate, so it's a kind of a semi tropical setting, um, and it's nominally ruled by this like undying king, but nobody's heard from him in like six or seven hundred years. A lot of the provinces have kind of stopped paying taxes because they realize they could just do that, and there's no repercussions. So why the hell would they pay taxes? <laughs> um, so it's in kind of this flux where. Um, he had united the entire area under this this unkillable black brass legion of automata about a millennia ago. And then as uh, threats hit the region, as time went on, the legion didn't help and they were able to repel things on their own. So a lot of the provinces are like, I think we're autonomous now. And they don't even know if the, if the Reaping King is still alive. So that's it's a cool, like, you know, influx or prepared to be influx kind of setting to run games in. Um, and we're going to be playing, so the, the capital province where the, um, what is it, Orcalcum throne, the, the folded palace where the, the Reaping King lives is Kaa Dune. Um, you can see it a little on the north of the map here if Alex pulls it down a bit. Um, it's this city that sits in this bay uh, on the north shore of the Gyre um, called the First City, colloquially, though the whole province and the city are known as Kaa Dune. That's because this gray part is all city. So the Legion, uh, in addition to being like the military arm, they're constantly expanding this city. So the borders are every year creep out a little more. Um, but nobody lives in like 98% of it. It's being built for some unscrutable purpose. It's, it's unclear whether the Reaping King is even human because he's clearly undying. Um, so the whole city, um, in, in my imagination of it, is this kind of like... Uh, brutalist alien like sprawl. Um, so everything feels like kind of familiar, you know, like kind of like it's made of some, you know, alien concrete, but the shapes are a little bit wrong. The proportions are wrong. The use of everything is kind of unclear. Um, but it's just this, and because it's been hundreds and hundreds of years as this city has been slowly expanding outward, you know, nature is slowly reclaiming the interior parts of it. So it's this like brutalist, you know, like sprawl that is slowly being reclaimed by like Colombian forests. <laughs> So that's kind of the backdrop here. We're gonna be starting right on the edge, which uh, is the fringe. So people live on the edge because it's very easy to get to the edge, but then it's a really a real hike to wind your way through the city to Ka Dune proper, which is like a big trading city. It's super populous. Um, so we're gonna be starting right on the edge of the city. Um, the players have have just gotten here and they're out of money. So that's that's our setup, and they need to get to Ka Dune. 
So is this based off of our world, like off of Earth? It is, yeah. Oh, okay. So Atlas of the Ladder Earth uh, is kickstarting right now. I'm not shilling. I'm not getting any money for this. <laughs> but, um, he released a whole a whole map, and this is like actually where modern day Colombia is. That's like a, oh, a thing taken cool. from. Um, if anyone's familiar with Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, um, that that takes place in essentially modern day or far future South America. And it's only clear when like you zoom out on the map that you drew and you're like, Oh yeah, it's like in Peru. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat. That's cool. I, I didn't realize I thought it was just, you know, usual fancy land fair of just like, I've made up yeah. this and okay, cool. It's I'm very gonna... different That's obviously. Cool. Cause this is, again, anyone's not familiar with the conceits of dying earth. It's like way far future, like yeah. billions of years in earth's future. So like just an uncountable amount of time has passed. It's usually referred to as like long time. Where so much time has passed and so many things have been lost that you could never hope to find. Mm -hmm. right, so if we want to, I guess, roll up some attributes or if anyone wants to talk about what their character concept is so it can invariably be bashed in by the role that you get. <laughs> yeah, I was going to you know, I was gonna talk about it, but I decided, you know, maybe, maybe I should roll first then decide from there and, and see, yeah. see what I want to do. Oh, I yeah, see so... the character sheet actually has like a, you can roll the, roll the stats right in the character sheet. Oh, yeah. Did that finally get fixed? I don't know. I'll try it out. Oof. Not good? Huh. Oh, no. Oh, not good. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm going to do that so everybody can see it. <laughs> uh, hell yeah, Dan. Nice. Do you have a zero in your screen? <laughs> okay, so when you open it, it pops into chat, it looks like. I then you should be able that. to just... Oh, okay. And then you can roll. Like, I can oh, okay. Oh, and that. then you can roll right from there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then once you're done, you can save changes. That's a lot of... Uh... Hey, Matt. Thank you for the sub. Make a half elf. <laughs> I'm going to go with a macro. Yeah, so that's a good catch, Dan. I know uh, I'm on the Discord and uh, Sober and the Dev. That was broken until like very recently. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's always cool when they kind of, you know, yeah. progress. This is based really heavily on. Stuff. The the OSC Foundry system, which is just fine. Uh, the the guy who's devving this has done a lot of really good work on it. So. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Things. Cool. All right. And there's a thing where I can make one of these fourteen, right, uh, wizard? Or... Yeah. So that's you can take it. You can take an oh. array, or you can and assign them as you want, or you roll three d six straight down, and then you have the choice to set one of your stats to fourteen. Okay. Cool. I'm so I'm gonna. Yeah. You guys, you guys have rolled 14. so much, it keeps snapping the chat back down to the bottom. I have to keep scrolling up to be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I got a nice 10 strength, 10 dex, 13 con, 5 int, 9 wisdom, and 9 charisma. Real uh, <laughs> real lucky guy. No, this is perfect. Yeah. No, gonna just... Let's see. <clears throat> For an expert, what's it... the best attribute? He's see. pretty good rolls there, Dan. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Really I'm trying to I'm trying to decide uh, what I want to change to 14. Either my dex or my con, probably. <laughs> yeah. So for for everyone else, the way that the stat spreads in this are the modifiers are very low. So a 14 through a 17 is a plus one, and an 18 is a plus two. Otherwise, it's you know, three is a minus two, and four to seven is a minus one. So. It's really plus one is about as good as you'll normally get. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can you can you have a limited number of stat increases you can use your skill skill points for. So there's that. Honestly, being the shitty kind mm. of works because I I told Jack my idea was to be just a a rat fink coward guy who just sets traps <laughs> and lets you guys take the hits. So uh, maybe you're just like thoroughly average. You yeah. Just get to put your fourteen where you want it. Yeah. Plus one. So question, hmm. when you roll like stab, is that a strength or a dex modifier? So it depends on, depends on, on yeah, it depends what you're doing. So normally the, the skills, like if we're talking out of combat, the skills can be rolled with whatever attribute makes the most sense in that situation. Okay. Cool. Um, in combat, it's going to depend on your weapon. Some weapons have to use strength, some oh. have to use dex. Some can use either, or there are um, class features and foci that allow you to use uh, something other than what the weapon says you have to use. 10-4. Cool. I'm so, yeah, my... my... Go ahead. Now off to you. 
<laughs> no, please, please, please go ahead. I'm going to look at something. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> speak. I am going to um, upgrade my intelligence from 12 to 14. All right. Um, going for the mage there, I think. Nice, nice. I got a, a con of seven, so minus one there, which is not ideal. Dex of nine, Ooh. which is pretty average. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's just, you're really gonna very likely end up with like the two hit dice uh, or the two <laughs> hit point wizard here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Purely by accident, he is a a stereotypical mage. We're level we're level one, right, uh, wizard? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do level one. Cool. Uh, it might be interesting to do two, but eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how long this takes, and then um, yeah. see how everyone feels about it. Sounds good. I'm assuming yes. Constitution affects hit points. It's your normal, like, you get your modifier per level. Yeah. Mm. This game okay, does do okay. one of the most randomly mean things, which is that the stated way that you advance hit points per level is reroll all your hit dice every level. Oh, boy. Yeah. You can't crazy. get lower than you did. If you roll lower, you get plus one. <laughs> okay okay right on. That's great. it's shockingly mean for like this game yeah. i'm gonna change my dex to a from a 7 to a 14 yeah i made right. my dex 14 as well just to get that extra ec bonus oh yeah that's nice that's nice um, okay i like a uh, specialist such a good focus i like that one a lot like in yeah. roll three mm. six and drop your lowest on that one skill that's like cool. yeah the the foci are like broadly minor superpowers in how strong they actually are even the ones that aren't that strong or see seemingly are actually pretty good mm. so um once you have your your 14s put um so then it's backgrounds uh, is the next thing to do which will give you a free skill and then allow you to roll for some improvements as well okay so i forget what this reminds me of it's a bit um like traveler life pathy yeah. sort of thing yeah except you can't like get your arm cut off or something like that. <laughs> it's all good it's all good so let's start on page 11 and there's a d20 table if you want to roll randomly i'm gonna go for merchant all right so then you get your free skill which uh, so is trade zero is there somewhere to put oh i see so these just um yep yeah minus one means no skill zero is zero cool nice okay I mean, and so huh. the way that the skill levels work, like narratively, is that if you're level zero in a skill, um, you could do that professionally. Like you have the competence of somebody who practices it for a living. Level one is like you're noticeably good at it. Level two is like you might be the best person in the city. Level three is like the best person in the area. Level four is like you're one of the best people in the world at that thing. And... Right it, it does feel like that in play because the 2d6 curve means that you're actually rolling pretty competently on average. And so a plus two makes a really big difference if like yeah. the average rolls, you know, a nine or something or a seven, but. I'm going a criminal background. All right. Nice. Cool. And I'm going soldier. Okay. I'm going more a uh, con man kind of criminal more than a. Uh... Any other kind of criminal. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so you can then either take take the quick skills if you want. Um, so you get you get the free one no matter okay. what. Um, right. You can either take the quick skills. You can pick two from the learning table, except for any skill, or you can roll three times between the learning and growth table and take what you get. Hmm. You get you get an extra thing, but you don't get to choose what yeah. it is. Okay, so it's either oh, cool. the two quick skills or you roll three times? On... So you, you can take the two quick skills real fast. You can pick two skills from the um, oh, learning right. table if you want. Okay. Or you can roll three times, split however you want between growth and learning. Okay. So you get, for the randomness, you get one extra chance to get something good or to get an improvement. They're all good. Oh, okay. But... Do you just get one growth base? Like, you just get one growth, one off the growth table anyway? Or what's the... No. You okay. don't, the growth table is only if you want to roll randomly. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All right. Mm -hmm. a roll. It's got to be a roll. <laughs> oh, that's a good gamble. So we get to pick... So we can, like, roll if we want three times on the growth table. 
Yeah. If yeah, you want okay, to. Cool. If you don't care about your skills, go for it. No, I think once on the growth, oh, I don't know. You don't have to allocate it beforehand. You can roll and then be like, okay, I'm going to roll my next one on the other table. Um, however I you want. Also, you can't start with skills over level one. So if you get a skill that you already have at zero, it goes to one. If you yeah. get it again, you can put it wherever you want. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go for a growth skill roll. And that's connect. All right. Which is one of the quick skills. And I'm going to go for another growth. Ooh, plus two. So it's so plus two mental. Um, mm -hmm. So could that be plus one on two different stats, or has it got to be plus two on one stat? Ah, uh, good question. Yep. So you can split it. Cool. So if I have a skill, so I have sneak uh, zero. Mm -hmm. Do I just change sneak from minus one to zero uh, on the? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So minus one means I'm untrained. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 I'll just, I'm going to take uh, Sneak, Exert, and Stab for my soldier. Fuck it, I'm going to go for the, the three rolls, I guess. Uh, yeah, if you don't take three random rolls, you get to pick two. The two. Uh, Dan. The two quick, okay. Uh, oh, I guess you get your free skill, obviously. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free skill yeah. is going to be Stab for Any for combat, skill. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, do, uh, let's do one growth and two learning. Is that possible? Yeah, fuck it. Yep. All right, let's see. What do I get for my growth? Uh, ooh, plus two mental. Um, yep, you can split that if you want between. Actually, that's actually not that useful for me. You're uh, not near any uh, of the, the uh, caps? No. No, it's not that useful. I mean, I, I guess I could bring my intelligence up from a minus one to a zero. I guess that probably mm. be the best... One, because everything else is just gonna be is just gonna be a <laughs> oh, a zero anyway. So, all right. Oh wait, no, seven still minus one, so it doesn't even matter. Oh, yeah, Never mind. Fuck that. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, that's uh, notice, and notice and exert. Okay, I shoot. That works out. All right. We're, we're moving on to picking your classes then. Fuck yeah. Um, you're welcome to half class if you don't quite understand how that works. I can help you out with that. Um, unlike uh, most games where you're multi-classing, it doesn't like gimp you super hard. Um, you lose. You generally lose probably typically the most powerful talent or powerful class uh, thing you get. You lose that, but you always take the better of hit dice, attack bonus. Um, and foci as well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, use, the class abilities are so good, too, so it's a really good trick. They're, they're really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to multi-class, but I decided to go full warrior. Yeah, the warrior's ones are really good. you got to remember to use that veteran's luck Yeah, all the time. Yeah, that one's, that always, one's sick. <laughs> once per combat, you just get to change hit to a miss or miss to a hit. Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, this game is sick. I love the way it's laid out. It's so simple, but I, I was saying to PT um, that this is the first game that's had multi-classing, or multi-classing in quotation marks, that I haven't just gone like, ugh. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> whenever, almost any time anybody ever asks me to multi-class in my games, I'm always like, do you have to? Do you, Now I gotta learn how this <laughs> works. <laughs> <laughs> but this game makes it so simple, so. You got a full expert? Yeah, full expert, just to... I think I, I, I like the the masterful expertise. Once per scene, the expert may re-roll a non-combat skill checks as an instant action. This allows the expert to make a roll and then immediately use the ability if the resulting toll isn't good enough to succeed. Um, in cases where it matters, the better of two rolls may be used. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, that's like, <laughs> that's real good. It's really good. That's yeah. crazy. How often can you do that? So uh, scenes scene, are a nebulous amount of time. Like a combat is a scene, but like also moving from. One, like an exploration turn in the traditional sense, like moving from a room to another is a scene. So mm, yeah. it's pretty strong. I'm assuming basically anything that just takes place in one area pretty much, except like, mm. so like conversing like with a, a noble or something like that as a scene. Yeah. 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 Sure. Everyone make sure to note your attack bonus, which is to say, Dan, make sure you have a plus one as your attack bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Oh, That's... yeah. I was about to say, wait a minute. <laughs> I guess so. You have plus two, I guess, because you have a. Uh... Oh, do I? 
Yeah, because you have strength as well. I guess if you're using a strength weapon, it'll be plus two. But I do also have a dex plus oh, one that just, as well. Just make it plus two. Pop yeah, it in, it cool. I think. Actually, no, no, no. That'll auto calc. Never mind. Don't do that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then everybody mark your hit dice. Um, just put, you know, I mean, we're, we're level one. Just but just put, you know, d six minus whatever or d six plus whatever it is for your sheet. For Alex, so should I? Should I correct it for my constitution negative then? I believe that will auto calc as well. Okay. So All your right. hit die, your hit die is still a d six plus two, even mm -hmm. if. Yeah. Even okay. if, yeah, that makes, that makes yeah. sense. So do you want us to roll it now, wizard, or is it... Uh, yeah, there should be a little button next to the, hit, the hit die mm -hmm. on your sheet if you mouse over it. Okay, oh, I'll take, no, you will four. I'll take, I'll take four. Yeah. <laughs> it's 1d6 minus one for a mage, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, cool. Everyone rolled a four. <laughs> Uh, did you have two my? Oh, you have a no. minus one to your con. Oh, jeez, Mark. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, <so> do I. <laughs> yeah. So going down in this game isn't is actually not nearly as mean as in some other games. So if you go down to zero, there's no negative hit points. If you go down to zero, um, you are uh, uh, dying, and you die in six turns. Okay. Um, if somebody stabilizes you, uh. If somebody comes up to you and rolls a heal check at eight plus the number of turns you've been dying, you stabilize. Um, you're brought up to one hit point, but you're frail, which means if you go down to zero again before you get bed rest, you fucking die immediately. Oh, that's that's <laughs> so, a great system. That's super, super yeah. uh, easy. I like it. It also means that, um, so the most you can roll on 2d6, obviously, is a 12. You die in six turns. It starts as an eight. The last two turns, the difficulty is going to be 14, 13 and 14. You, if you don't have a healing kit, you cannot roll a 13 or a 14 unless yeah. you have a heal skill. So a normal character would be unable to save you unless yeah. they have either a heal skill or a healing kit. And I'm, so. I'm assuming if you're down and something attacks you, you just die? Yeah, if someone coup de grace you, you die. Cool. So for enemies, right. they die instantly um, unless it makes sense for them to not die because they're somebody important. That's a, that's a great system. I find there's way too many games that have way too many i guess asterisks Over next next to like next to their like you dying sort of thing where it's like okay how do they actually die then because there's this and that so that, that's great yeah like, you can't know. die <laughs> <laughs> this is in 5e you don't have to flip three coins to see yeah. whether you die or not <laughs> next step is to pick your foci so there are only like two or three of them that are class class restricted so, and then one of them will be only Alex could take it, and that's what is it? Polymath, um, do, do, do. which is absurdly yeah. good. Um, you get a bonus skill, and you treat all non-combat skills as zero, which means you roll all non-combat skills. What the as if fuck? That's it's so, so good. good. Oh my it's god! It's very good. I am taking that. That's a. I didn't even see it's, that one. That's so good. Holy yeah, shit! Only experts and partial experts can take that one. Yeah. So. Oh my god. Um, it's no. It's stupid, but foci <laughs> do represent like a big investment of resources. You only get like five or six of them all yeah. the way through level ten. So. That's insane. Um. Holy Are we shit. gonna be meeting many uh, NPCs here, or or not really? Oh, there'll be at least a handful. Yeah, like I said, it'll be more focused around exploration and dungeon delving. But it's not like I'm not just gonna be rolling up random encounters every three yeah. three exploration turns. So, I mean, also, Martin, I think you're a bit like me when it comes to games, where like you might pick something less optimal just because it fits your character more, which is yeah. what I do a lot of time. Where it's like, yeah, it doesn't want to come up, but like it just it fits the character <laughs> I'm going for. So even if it doesn't, I because some people are like, oh, it didn't come up at all. This game sucks. You're terrible at GMing. But it's like, oh, hey, man, like I'm sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> Life. Can't shoehorn in all of those yeah. on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm totally. Uh, is there a compendium I could just drag from for? Yes. Uh, I will. Which one do you want? I'll just drag them for you. Uh, I will take polymath. So you, you take, okay. It you looks like you can. Right you're able to do it if you want. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I was able there to. Should be, my... Yeah, it's in uh, item. Okay, there's cool. a foci and ability. I already threw all your class abilities on your sheets. Yeah, I, pre I, I thought. So I thought for a second I was like, wait, yeah, when, when I typed out expert, did just do that automatically? I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, if only. So yeah, I think I'm gonna take polymath, and I think I'm gonna take trap master because uh, both seem really fun. And that's that's both disarming and handling them, right? Or is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Because uh, I think, 
I know from from other Osar games that I've I've actually I at least played with Jack for sure. I feel like setting ambushes is always a good always a good bet yeah. when it comes to, if you know if you know what's what's around the corner. I'll be I'll be relying on you, uh, uh, Dan, to uh, save us when. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, if a lot of the um, <laughs> so. a lot of the first I also will give you a bonus skill that's related to them. Yes, that's cool. So yeah, that'll actually my arms master will give me another level of stab and assassin gives me another level of sneak nice. does that do it all automatically uh i don't know what's automated in this one yet um, no okay so four so. yeah four polymath says gain any one bonus skill could i make that shoot or is that only uh it doesn't say non-combat non combat bonus yeah. skill so because oh, no. it's a, i mean it so says you, all non-combat you treat stuff. all non-combat skills yeah, as, as zero zeros. but I don't saying. think there's a restriction. You could take shooter stab. Yeah. I assume it would say that, but yeah, just to make sure. Um, it's such precise wording. Yes. Right in the next That's why, that's why I assume, but I didn't want to just do it. And I'm like, halfway through a game, you're like, oh, you weren't actually supposed to be able to do that. So I just want yeah. to make sure. Well, after our conversation in, in Burger House, clearly somebody's going to take Rider. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we go into like a building, you're like, Fucking pushing a horse upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for authority, I think. That looks fun. I mean, at level one, it's not huge, but 1d6 damage plus twice the character's level for uh, uh, traps is like. Uh, like, for really like dangerous ones, is really good. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's. That's at least five damage when you're at level two. So, that's. Uh... Also, somebody. I remember somebody being like, man, this is really weak. And it's just like if you're dungeon crawling, trap master is absurd. That means yeah. you can re-roll a failed save from a trap once per room. Yeah, because that's a new scene. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, exactly. Yeah. So it's just, it's really good. Uh, it's, it's both good you offense re-roll. and defense. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's sick. This is going to become the clever party, isn't it? We're not going to actually get into any combat. We're either going to be persuading them or laying traps or... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll constantly lay traps yeah, yeah. and there will always be a second door that Jack has the monsters go through. That they always <laughs> just decide to not go through the right one. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> Foiled Turns again. out this, the location is filled with monster closets that open from the doors. <laughs> like it's fucking doom. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their, their foci, correct? Yeah, which ones? Yes, which sir. ones did you guys pick, uh, Dan and Martin? I, I picked uh, I picked Arms Master, which uh, you have uh, unusual competence with thrown weapons and melee attacks. Uh, so basically, I get uh, stab as a bonus skill. I can pull out melee and thrown weapons instantly, rather than it being like an action. Um, I can add stab to my melee or thrown weapons damage or shock damage. Uh, and then I also took Assassin, which has to do with basically like sneak attacks uh, and that sort of thing. Oh, wow. Uh, you gain sneak as a skill. Um, you can conceal an object no larger than a knife from anything less invasive than a strip search. You can draw or produce this object as an on-turn action. You and your point-blank thrown or melee attacks made during a surprise round with it cannot miss the target. Oh my god, oh, wow. that's sick! <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're fucking yes. savage. Yeah, oh yeah, it's like that like, that gift you posted of uh, from uh, like was it was it from a shetty? Yeah, uh, it was from uh, Desperado. Desperados, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> the crazy knife throwing assassin. Hell yeah, that's sick. Well, you, Martin? Oh, I've gone for authority. I only get one foci as a um, a mage. Right. Uh, oh, really? So that gives me the lead skill, um, and once per day I can make a request from an NPC who's not openly hostile, um, and need to make a roll. And if I succeed, then they have to have to follow that instruction, which is pretty good. <laughs> it's a charm person, that sounds fine. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, a, like a mundane charm person. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so like the second level of that is like barely mundane. Yes. <laughs> Like no one, no one who follows you will ever not listen. Oh, to so you, you like, like? Oh, you're you basically become like, uh, like you radicalize people. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, fill <laughs> yeah. them with confidence. Fill them with confidence. Yeah, Martin's over in the Pacific Northwest, just uh, <laughs> building a cult. 
your with with your henchmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very super villain esque. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now the the level twos, I mean, it is a huge investment of resources, obviously, because you only get a couple of foci in the yeah. entire game. So the level twos for a lot of them are like, oh, that's like a minor that's it's like an actual superpower. <laughs> like Arms Master yeah. level two is like always treat the target as if they have AC 10 for shock and you also get an extra plus one to hit. So if they can be shocked, they, they essentially, they always will be like no weapon has less than a shock of 10 or yeah, there's, I think close combatant does that as well. Die hard, which just makes you at level two. You just don't die once per day. If you get reduced to zero hit, zero hit points, you have one <laughs> once per day, <laughs> unless you get like, in, like eviscerated, it doesn't save you, but <laughs> uh, and lots of other stuff like uh, nullifier level 2 which Matt has in one of our games um, nullifier looks simply... pretty crazy nullifier is really cool there's a, a class called the mage slayer that's in the atlas of the latter earth uh, the one that's being kickstarted um, that pretty much uses nullifier like you get nullifier for free as part of the class ability because oh. you're just a guy that's intended to, to kill mages that's sweet. and so he has it at level 2 which means, like, once per day, you can just go, that magic doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> no save. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. That's, that's great. That's insanely that's, that's even so, badass. Even if it doesn't allow a saving throw normally. Wow. It just like, negates yeah. it. That's, that's, it. That's, like, that's like a fucking anime character. That's Me. just like... <laughs> yeah, very much, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so one of the last things to do is... Um, you just get one extra skill that represents something that your character is interested in outside of their job. So oh, it's like you a just hobby. bump one skill. Yep, hobby, natural oh, really? talents, oh, cool. your interests, expertises, so personal focus. Even with polymath, I, I should just keep everything at minus one just so I'm clear on what I don't actually have expertise in, right? Or what, what would you say? I mean, there's no reason not to put all the non-combat okay. skills at zero. Just, yeah. You functionally have all of them at zero. Okay. Um... There may be some weird interaction. Like, if you wanted to increase the skill, you'd have to increase it to zero. That's, why, that's what I was thinking. Where it's yeah, like, yeah. That's why I want to I want to know. In case. I do. You know what? I think it would be fun to play this level two instead of level one. It's not going to fuck anything up. Okay. Um, so, if that influences your decision, you will get some skill points for level two. So. Oh, okay. Want to get another focus pick as well? Yes. I think everyone will get an extra focus pick, maybe. Oh. Um... You get some skill points to spend, just because I think it's it's interesting to show this stuff off. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. I'm in. Yeah, I'll just keep this. Oh, yeah, who's gonna say no to a free level, right? Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, we actually yeah. play. I'll just make sure to make some of the monsters a little harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I get I get an actual attack bonus now, which is nice. Better. So I'll just Martin, four more hit points. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so there are. Notably, one of the reasons it says to roll, I, I had you roll it earlier, but one of the reasons it says to roll last. Oh, if you, uh, Alex, if you change it to level two, if you can take that roll, it's fine if you want it. Um, if you change it to level two, it will re roll. Oh, I, 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 I have to re roll both of them, right? To... Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you go in your character sheet and change level to two, and then, so actually, it still put it at, leave it at 1d6. Okay. And it will auto roll both based on your level. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. true. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it should. Cool. I believe that's how it works. Yeah, I did. Nice. There you go. Oh boy, yay! Oh. Same, same <laughs> health. Woo! So you plus oh. one, Alex. <laughs> yay! <laughs> uh, guys. Yeah, you can never, you can never go down. You always get plus one if, if you roll lower. I feel slightly healthier. <laughs> uh, attack bonus. So presumably the mages get magic as a skill by default anyway, do they? Um, I yes, I believe yeah. so. So we can go to. It's been a while. I looked at it. Um. Yeah, magic is a bonus skill. Yeah. Cool. You get it at level zero, or if you already have it at zero, you can take it at one. Okay, so... Now, you said... Go ahead, Dan. We get more skill points at level two? Yeah, so I'll let... This is technically still Martin. This is level one, so we'll do this really quick. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, it's all good. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Martin, you have max spell casting level of one. You can cast one spell per day. You can have... Three spells prepared, and you get two yep. arts. Cool. Let me see if the auto calc for effort is working. Yeah, it's... Oh, hold on. Let me fix your sheet, though, because i got to give you the spellcaster sheet. 
Ah, cool. There you go. Should be good now. We should have an extra tab. Oh, I see that. Yeah, there's so many good fucking <laughs> foci, foci, whatever. Just... They're all so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff there. Yeah. I think I'm going to take alert. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Oh, and also you had a plus one bonus to our, our size initiative roll. To, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. So, Martin, your starting effort is one plus their magic skill plus the better of your intelligence or charisma. So. Cool. Uh, You're not going to take sniper's start... eye, Dan, for your throwing knife skill? <laughs> Ooh, I didn't even look at that. Oh, boy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, ridiculous. So you start with two effort there, Martin. I put it in there for you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, On the spell right. slot. Um, yep, yep, just to any two of the arts that you want, unless it says... Uh, like, I'll just explain this for everyone else while you're looking. Uh, so the way that the magic works in this game, you have a pretty restricted number of spells that you can cast. Um, for example, 10th level uh, High Mage, which is the highest it goes, has six spells you can cast per day. Um... You can have 12 prepared, and you can cast all 5th level spells if you really want to. Um, the Where it comes in, like, oh, that's not very much stuff that I can do. Uh, well, first of all, you can, you know, at that point, you have a lot of money. You've probably made, you know, scrolls and wands, essentially. Um, but they've done a really clever thing, which has taken all of the, like, utility spells that it normally felt really bad to dedicate spell slots to in a lot of games, mm -hmm. and they've shunted them into arts. And so arts, uh, you have this pool of like magical energy called effort, and you commit that, and arts have different durations you commit it for. So, um, for example, Arcane Lexicon, which is um, like uh, read, read languages, right? You commit effort for the scene, which means that, you know, for that room or for that combat or for that, you know, narrative scene, uh, you're, you don't have that effort but you can read, you, know, you, you can do read language essentially. And then at the end of that scene, you get that effort back, which means that you can then use it for something else later. Um, some of them are commit for the day because they're much stronger, like in Power of Sorcery, um, you can get a reroll for a spell. And so of course, like you can't, you know, doing that once per day is very strong. Um, so you don't get that effort back until the very next day. Um, there's a lot of them that are seen or, or, most of them are seen, frankly. Um, the, the powerful ones are per day. These are so good. They're it's, very good. It's really, it's, yeah. it's really good. It gets rid of the whole, like, oh, do I really want to prepare, like, yeah, yeah read languages today? Like, I can only prepare, like, three spells. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. If you have it, you can commit the effort. I was also seeing a jack. I just think it fits better with the medium that it's, or, like, the Mia's trying to portray, which is just, like, Almost no wizard in, in uh, like, movies or TVs or books is, like, totally drained out of stuff by just, like, checking scrolls or whatever else. Like, it's usually they get to use their powers <laughs> up. So, like, it, almost all of them can usually on command be like, oh, yeah, this is magical. I can tell just from, like, it's aura or whatever else. So, I think it does a better job of that because, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> I much yeah, prefer that. And that's one of the best things that the wizard can do. In my, I think it's a super strong art. Um, which is, it's, it's sense magic where you can commit effort as an instant action too. So you can do it on turn if you want to, yeah. you can, you can see magic and get a one sentence description of items. So it's also identify, which is very strong. Um, because classically identify is like the meanest fucking thing you can do to people in old school games. Just like, yeah. I don't know. Do you put on the magical armor? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm one. Of, I'm one of those people that just I can't wait to tell people what a thing they found is. Right. I'm like, come <laughs> on, do it. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Even in like sci-fi stuff, I'm just like, it's this, and it does this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, honestly, usually like in one shots, I usually just give it to people because like in campaigns, depending yeah. on how it's built, you know, sometimes they're just like, oh yeah, you gotta go back to town and like part of the money you're gonna spend is to get identified. But like, yeah, yeah. that's so, part of it sometimes. Yeah. Sure. Like in a one shot, it's like, oh, I found a ring, and I was like, I can't tell you what it is. I'm like, fuck it, no, it's a fire ring. Fucking blast people with it. Yeah. It's great. Um, so, uh, I, I missed it in case you said it, Jack, but, um, for level mm -hmm. two skills, is it just, do we just add to a skill? Or so, it... yeah, I was, I was working with Martin, but I imagine he's going to sit there and, and mull over the arts for a bit. So <laughs> I will explain how level two works. Um, so you get three points to spend. 
So if you see there's an unspent little pool beneath work on the first page of your character sheet. Okay. Um, so let me find the uh, thing. Okay. So you get three points. Um, your saving throws and stuff all go up. That That's automatic, though. Um, make sure you move your attack bonus to whatever it would be if, if it mm -hmm. would change. Um, so what you do is you get three skill points. If you want to gain a skill at level zero, it's one skill point. If you want to take a level zero skill to level one, it's two skill points. You can't... You have to be level three before you can move stuff up to, to skill two. Okay. So don't worry about that. Um, so what that means is you can take three skills up to zero if you want. You can take one skill from untrained to one mm. if you want. Or you can take one skill from zero to one and then have a leftover skill point you could spend at a point where it makes sense later. Okay. Um, casters will get new spells and arts automatically. The other thing you can do with skill points is you can purchase attribute advancements. So you can only do that starting at level two, which is great because we're going to start at level two. The first one costs one skill point and the second one costs two skill points. So if you wanted to, you could burn all three skill points that you get on two attribute advancements. So bumping two stats up one or one set up two. Okay. So if I burn three points, I could bring strength from 10 to 12? Is that correct? Yes, okay. that'd be all your points, no more skills, but you could bring strength up to twelve. It wouldn't do anything, obviously. No, no, I just I just want to make sure I'm getting. But... I, I'm yeah, getting exactly. right. uh, What yeah, are the I'll modifier see. kind of cutoffs? It's like uh, fourteen to... is plus one, and uh, eighteen is plus two, and then it's Jeez. nine <laughs> or eight is the the first uh, to bring mm, it okay. to a zero. I think. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm very far away from. Yeah, that. eight to thirteen is no modifier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Cool. All right, I'm going to bring shoot, shoot up to one, I guess, then. And uh, uh, hmm. And then pick your new first eye. Obviously, everyone gets on a level two. Yeah. I, I did decide to take Sniper's Eye, Alex. He did? Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it looks better yeah, or not, sorry, but it just seemed, it seemed fitting for it what you were doing. It just seems for. crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it just looks nuts. one thing to note. Uh, there is one way you can break skill, you can beat skill caps. So like right now that you can't buy yourself a level two skill, yeah. but, but if a focus takes you to level two, you can have that with the sign. Oh, you can, uh -huh. if focus takes you over <laughs> what your current cap is, you can still do it. Okay. Because it represents, right? It's a big spend. Yeah. You should get shit for that. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. You could get level then, two then. Uh, I I could with shoot, I could get shoot up to like level two. I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend all my skill points on shoot and bring it from a minus one to a one. Yeah. Right? And, then, and then you take yep. sniper's and eye to bring it up to two. The, oh my God. <laughs> Also, yeah, uh, yeah. it's it's very circumstantial, but honestly, if you if we do get a chance to do an ambush, the execution attack. Yeah, the yeah. Rolling I three don't care six if it never, and dropping the doesn't come up. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're so dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. All right. Have you picked your arts yet, Martin? I have. So I've got two so far. So I think that's mm -hmm. level one, and I get a third one for level two. Yeah. You also get four spells you can cast as well. Yeah. All right, so that's all spent. So I've gone for inexorable effect, which looks fun. Um, so I can force somebody to re-roll uh, a spell effect. Nice. Against us, which is quite nice. I think that's more fun than just countering it. We'll go for that one. Um, can um, you bring a, a foci to level two? Yeah. Yeah. No restrictions on that. Cool. Nice. Oh, too much choice. Far too much choice. Yeah, it's okay. We're just here to chill for the day. So it's not like... Yeah. Now, we have not gotten to saving throw. Did I miss saving throw somehow? They auto-increase. It's yet. just... It goes... The threshold oh. goes down one per level for everybody. Okay, cool. So... Yep. Now, does, how do... How do how do those work? Uh, maybe we'll get to it. But, like... So, I have, like, a 13 evasion. So, mm -hmm. we're looking to but, roll over... Under over. that? Over. Over that. Yeah, so they go, they go down... Yeah. Mm. It, no, it's it's a D twenty. So it's a normal oh, okay. it's, it it's your classic like style saving. Yeah, throws. that's your BX yeah. style. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, you wanna you wanna hit or go over. Okay, nice. And then luck is just you can't modify it, it goes down every level. So because like in your case, Dan, you have a lot of plus ones, so all of your saving yeah. throws are to thirteen. So what's everybody else's at? 14? Fourteen to thirteen, yeah. 
Oh, okay. It's a, a, a mishmash. I think everyone else has at least 113. Yeah, yeah, evasion's 13 for me. Everything else is 14. Also, one nice thing that these character sheets do, if you haven't realized, if you mouse and hold over any of the skills, it gives you the text description of what the skill does, which is very nice. Ooh, I love that. They're all pretty straightforward, but sometimes it's like, is that covered under? And you don't have to like do any flipping. Which yeah. Is Ooh, man. I'm thinking about taking Lucky just because it kind of fits my character. Yeah. Just uh, the once per week a blower effect. A blower effect that would That's otherwise cool... have left you killed, mortally wounded, or rendered helpless somehow yeah. fails to connect or affect you. That's yeah, I love that one that's that not one. even like, oh, it leaves you with one hit point. It's just like, no, it just didn't hit. Yeah, it just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> And also, if you gamble, it just makes you really good at yeah, gambling. Yeah, you get two rolls. That's great. I love that. That's a that's a good little extra. I like that. Oh no, they haven't listed the spells with in level order, so I may got to. Oh, they are. Them. There's a table there, I believe. Okay. Um. So page uh, sixty-four. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. Yep. It's short descriptions, but you get you get oh, the yeah. gist. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because there is. Like, even if you take uh, Sense Magic, apprehending the arcane form is kind of the same thing, but it's a yeah, spell. Yeah, I just saw that. I Yeah. It's, again, it's because you really don't get that many arts, right? You get two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven total. So it's it's a big pick. And it's much easier to gain spells. And obviously there's... One of the cool things about this game that won't come up at all, so I want to talk about it, is that there are systems for, like, systems that aren't just like, mm, I don't know, ask your GM for mm -hmm. discovering new magic or discovering you know a spell that already exists making your own making magical workings which are like big permanent magics making magical items uh crafting your own gear or modifying it to do stuff like i love that shit that's like some of my there was stuff on it. a ton yeah. of cool gm tools <clears throat> in this yes. also that, they're really yeah. good they're like uh they're so good yeah too. yeah yeah also they look um, really cool in the in the notes tab, you should all be able to see there is like a, a quick reference for rules, combat, uh, all the foci, um, and conditions. The ones of the PDF. Click the PDF, and then it'll open. Don't click the name. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I was because uh, I'm I was saying to you guys. So whenever I end up bringing back Pyrian at some point, I'm gonna be using rules out number and the the gem tools in the you book yeah if you were gonna bring that back yeah uh, i'm gonna bring actually, it back thinking just, about that last night i have like yeah, five man. i say five i have like 30 different projects in my head at all times about what i want to do <laughs> yeah, next but between <laughs> streaming youtube and everything else so it's it's hard to know but um definitely gonna be using words on number and also i've like i bet everyone's awesome. while, everyone's while i'll just read it i'll just send jack a giant like bible of just like dude this fucking book has so much good shit and I, but like there's so much stuff that's so perfect for like the world building aspects of uh of what i'm going yeah, for so yeah. it's like perfect for that so i'll yeah so i'll definitely definitely be using this and it's just it's so good for nice this. yeah because um be fun there's a lot of GM tools in, in games that I feel don't need to be there because they're often just retreading stuff that I feel like anybody who's already in the OSR or whatever already knows. It's very, like, surface-level stuff, you know what I mean? Almost, like, placeholder. Yeah, or it's very edge case type yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Whereas this just gets to the point and just has good ideas that prompt you, but... uh. Yeah, just like the different town types of towns. Yes, exactly. And settlements and yeah, very yeah. cool. Yeah, I just flipped through it, but I was like, oh man, this is. I need to go back and do a deep dive on this. It's, it's very good. It's a lot of like the tag system is awesome, where it's just like if you're gonna make a place, like just generate two tags for it, and it gives you like what's a conflict, what are some people you would know, like what's yeah. like the advantage of this place, like stuff yeah. like that. It's so good, and yeah. just like generating everything from like. A people to a court to a kingdom to an empire like it's just it's all there it's so it's so good um yeah if anyone's played around with um with like stars without number like a lot of this takes inspiration from the the sector generation stuff which mm -hmm. is just like we're going to generate a hex map of this exact size and this tool like you literally just roll through and do it and it gives you so and many fill it in like, kind of oh yeah like hold on how are we going to integrate these things together like it's That's such cool. good just brain food um, I'm not sure how to pronounce nice. this, but I'm going to go for um, Gifted Chirurgian. Chirurgian? Chirurgian. Chirurgian. <laughs> yeah. That's a made-up word. Chirurgian. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, probably French. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I decided to give my extra my extra point there. That's a cool ability. Yeah, so I brought, I brought heal up to zero from my last, like, the ring point, and now it's up to one. 
And so now gain heals bonus skill. You may attempt to stabilize one mortally wounded adjacent person per round as an on-turn action. When rolling heal, uh, heal skill checks, roll 3d6 and drop the lowest die. So hopefully I can at least perhaps keep us alive just a little bit, even if uh, <laughs> if you go down, Marn, with your... I mean, actually, Marn, do you have more health than me? Because you might. I'll go six. I think Marn has do. more health. Yeah, so if yeah, I go no, down, no. I'm going to tell you guys how to, how to sew me up. <laughs> like this level two and the hit points are five six and six hell yeah <laughs> what the hell is it with the spell names in this game i mean they're, they're like, very they're wordy they're very uh jack vance dying earth yeah so we've got imperceptible cerebral divergence i mean <laughs> or esp that's or... esp yeah <laughs> So that's the interesting part, too, is that the spells, you can cast less of them. They are way stronger than traditional oh, yeah, D&D yeah. spells. And almost all of them, one. yeah, almost all of them scale per level. Yeah, invisibility is level is a level one spell yeah. in this game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, um, but also it's, it's compressed because it's only five spell levels. So there is that. But like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Of course, you have sleep, which is... Way stronger than sleep in other games. It is just all four hit dice or less creatures go to sleep immediately. Not like yeah. N hit dice or whatever. <laughs> uh, Jack, do you, want mm -hmm. just, do you want me to just upload like uh, whatever profile picture I, or uh, character picture I pick? Yeah, you can stick it on. It's fine. Make sure it's in like a folder that's for this. Yeah, I just didn't know if you um, want me to send it to you instead and you apply it. Or uh, sorry, I, 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 just, I just should be right it. into it, my it's fine, uh, character it's fine. sheet. Cool. Just, yeah. It's good. Just click worlds and then yeah. the WWN one shot and just upload it to Sounds there. Sounds good. <laughs> I, I don't care that much. It's on yeah. a pie with like a 200 gigs of storage. It's not going <laughs> to... Jack out. just screams because you broke his system, Dan, by uploading There's it. one yeah, extra there's one egg just yeah. floating around. Yeah. Yeah. He just loses his mind. <laughs> one, yeah, 200 by 200 JPEG. Yeah. <laughs> just the whole yeah. He's uploading fucking like 8K pictures of just full videos and everything. Just <laughs> destroying. <laughs> you can see Danny like Trejo's pores on yeah. his <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a yeah, an 8K scan of the film yeah, with like the masters. <laughs> oh. That's funny. Yeah, the um the uh what is it? Uh magic missile of this game is not the ma it's the this is the damaging spell, which is one D eight damage per level to a visible target automatically. If they're one hit dice, they die automatically. Nice. You don't roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Oh, there are too many. Uh, too much. This is good. I like this. Yeah, it's These cool. Are good it's choices cool, to it? make. <laughs> um, yeah, invisibility is a uh, is a first level spell. I remember uh, yeah. my players cast that at third level um, to make themselves invisible to like this band of assassins in the city because they were so afraid of them. <laughs> and it's like one of them was a caster. I'll see a dominate person is like a level one spell in this game. That's great. That's very powerful. <laughs> it is, yeah. That's usually a level three spell or higher than in other games where it's like, oh boy, that's like. Ah. I'm going to grab Spirit Familiar as my second focus i think i don't even know what to google for my character because i just see my character as just like this bald creepy guy but i'm just trying to, I'm trying to try <laughs> like tell me bald creepy guy nothing nothing good's coming up do, 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 do. oh <laughs> Ooh, these are rough <laughs> i really like so there's a spell that's first level that is a uh, decree of ligneous dissolution which is just destroy all non-magic non -magic, yeah. like plant-based matter in an area. So the... Um, mm. Oh, God, what the fuck yeah. is that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm going to post that in the chat. Horrifying. Right now. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, That's uh, not what I'm thinking. I just, uh, I, I just... So you're like, uh, right, we'll destroy all non-magic plant matter. The, um, the atlas that's coming out has a supplement for ships, and you're like... Oh, that would be so strong against a ship. There is one specific like Ooh. enhancement for ships. It's just like if you're in a warship, it has this, which is just like saltwood blessing, which is like that does not work. It doesn't work on the <laughs> ship. It'd be too strong. <laughs> Time for swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
that that is so that's like some like play makeup it, it's stage. a mask apparently it's uh yeah it's yeah. Like, like, totally a mask yeah. Yeah. it reminds me of um the dude from fucking Sin City, the the yeah, like, the yellow, yeah, guy. yellow guy, the yellow bastard. yeah, I can always yeah. see that. Yeah, who was that? That was Jared Leto, I believe. Was it? Was it crazy? With, yeah, with some crazy makeup on. It's gonna make a joke where it's he's like as he's, old as he is. I know. Cause, well, because he's like Leto? he's in he's in Fight Club, right? And like he yeah, I know. With, he's the like the bleach blonde. Yeah, he gets his fucking ass, ass beat. beat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, isn't I can't remember if it's a sequel or if it's the first movie. But the um, the guy who plays Frodo is in Sin City. He plays a fucking creepy. He, that's that's the first one. It's yeah. uh, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. The, the glasses. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 It has yeah, like his whole body member, and he just sits there like oh, it's like Jesus. This is uh... mm -hmm. <laughs> that first Sin City movie was was really close to the comic. They did a really, really yeah. Good job I, with that I enjoy show. it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's very much that like super. <laughs> super edgy. It's also cause... just <laughs> so it's it's super edgy, but I like I like how ra how much the tone shifts between some of them. Yeah, like with the one with fucking uh, wow, what's his face? Um, the, the Mickey Rourke plays. Yeah, where it's just yeah, like Marv. what the fuck? Like, cause you watch the first two and you're like, oh okay, like this is weird, but not. And then it's just like this guy's like a superhero. What the fuck? Yeah, going he's on a total here? superhero. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. like ninjas running around and like there's, yeah. one, there's one i think i forget who who's in it but yeah there's like ninjas running around yeah. and just crazy shit happening all the prostitutes have like ninja stars and shit yes. oh yeah that one's just like sort of a exploitation <laughs> one yeah yeah that's I, with um uh, Rosario, um, Rosario, 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 Dawson. Rosario Dawson. Yeah, and, uh, but the, the that's the one where it's the people. dude, the boyfriend is like was a cop. Oh, and the um, who is it? It's like is it the guy from Children of Men, right? Clive Owen. The oldest well, Clive it's, Owen, but but you're thinking of you're thinking the dead of, guy is you're thinking of the guy. Oh fuck, uh, Del Toro. It's not Benicio um, Del Toro, is it? Benicio Del Toro's in it. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the he's the guy yeah. who gets killed by by. There's uh, the scene where he's like dead in the car with his throat slit and he's talking to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Benicio Del Toro. Yeah. I will say I'm not really a huge Mickey Rourke fan, but I will say I think he was born to play the role in that movie. I think that was oh, oh yeah. absolutely yeah, he, was... he is Marv. Like, yeah, holy shit. Yeah, he did a good job. You don't like Mickey Rourke? I don't dislike Mickey Rourke. He's just kind of I mean, it's more like he's not really I guess from my era of movies. Maybe it's also somebody. He's also the weirdest dude Pretty because badass. I saw what he looked like when he was younger, and then he had all like the work done and probably drugs and other things. I'm like, oh my god. That is, Did he uh, have work done? Face he smashed looks in like from a boxing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like in like State of Grace when he's like young, you're like, damn, yeah. this dude was a freaking looker. Yeah, he was, looker. A, he was like, like a looker. And then you shit. see him, because like, I only knew him originally from like Iron Man 2 was the first time I probably saw him. That and like Expendables. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, because like, I was, what, 14 in 2009? No, I was like 10 or 12, whatever. Yeah, so like... it. it that's that was my first little rule of them. So when I saw him in a younger movie or a, a older movie, I was like, "What the fuck? This guy used to be like super attractive." That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Was it boxing that messed him up? I didn't even know that. I mean, but, yeah, it's he, a bunch he looks of like a surgery too. But... Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Crazy. Also, yeah, like, I mean, I, I'm fairly sure he boozed dude. and drugs will like did a lot of drugs, oh, well, which yeah. also will. Yeah, I think he was put a, a lot of mileage on your body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks like uh, he, like a wet piece of a dried piece of leather. Or <laughs> yeah, like yeah. yeah, yeah. Why is that one Muppet made out of leather? Yeah. That's not a leather Muppet. That's yeah, Troy McClure. Leather Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Why does everybody make their D and D characters so fucking hot? I don't want a hot D and D character. I want a regular oh. dude. <laughs> Every thief is just like, oh, I'm so cool. How else am I supposed to play so Marvel edgy. in my D&D &D game? <laughs> so I've gone from magic uh, skill 0 to 1 um, for two points, and I've also upgraded my crappy con from 7 to 8, which gets rid nice. of Nice, you get some... Yeah. Oh, nice. Wait, you now, I think, officially have the most you, hit points. You get those mage. back. Yeah, should... Oh, so I get my plus 2 back, so that should be 8 now. Yep, hey. you have the mage, you have the most hit points. That's, a, that's great. <laughs> tank. That's very funny. Nice. Very fitting with my character going to be a bit of a coward <laughs> in the back. So I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be behind you, uh, uh, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got our... All right, I think everyone's done, right? 
Um, yeah. 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 Minus like equipment stuff. Right. right. Yes. Equipment is, is important. Yeah. So there are packages you can take. Um, yeah. Or level two. Yeah. So I would say like you're welcome to take a package. And if you want to swap some stuff out, it's. Yeah. Probably I'm not going to give you like grand plate or something like what? that. What? Okay. Well. <laughs> There's some cool. I, I like how armor is split up in this game. Um, some of it's kind of weird because it's like, you know, per setting. But um, it's like uh, like the war shirt is like leather because fucking leather armor didn't exist because what the hell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the war shirt's just like, what is this? This is just clothes that you're really comfortable in, so you fight a little better in them. Like That's it's like great. your lucky shirt or the stuff you like to wear. <laughs> so you get one one extra AC for it. It doesn't doesn't have any encumbrance. Okay, I found my character art. What the fuck? <laughs> Who is this like stalker NPC? I know. <laughs> it's just... Oh god. Actually, I think this guy's in fucking Metro Exodus somewhere. Sure looks like he's from that game. What? <laughs> what are you an Inuit? What <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> actually, actually, no. I actually for real. I think, I think he is. I think I. There you go. This is actually a good picture. I'll go with that one. All right. Uh, is it the one shot with W N as a? One yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, it's very U. <laughs> also, if anybody in the chat wants to give me uh, name ideas, feel free to post them. I'll uh, perhaps take them under uh, <laughs> under consideration. Giving yourself a uh, plausible deniability for people. Yeah, once 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 somebody goes like name him Blunkus, I'm like I'm not naming him Blunkus. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not again yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the roguish wanderer pack and trade out the short sword for two daggers if that's cool yeah that's totally fine Word. <laughs> uh, thank you for the bits Ori uh, in this game it won't uh, I mean I appreciate the cheer for the twitch thing but uh, just so you know there won't be any uh, any helping hands for this two shot what? <laughs> I don't want. I, yeah. I I didn't have time to talk to Jack about stuff, so I don't want to impose that on him because it does change how you have to deal with things. With people, it just posts a thing where uh, your uh, your villain dies after a failed sleep spell. It, it, if you're not if you're not expecting that stuff, it can change how you're uh, <laughs> gonna take it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Well, another thing I really like about this game uh, is the gear bundles, which says like you can disallow it if you don't like it. Um, but it is essentially like pretty high encumbrance, but it's like, you have kind of everything that you would reasonably expect. So it's like, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. So you're not like, okay, I have a bag of ball bearings and a rope that's 50 feet long and a silk rope that's a hundred feet long and a ladder and a 10 foot pole. It's and a situational. Small you and know, a piece you of can chalk be like, and... <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's. That's generally how I play That's stuff, how I run too. I'm not, I'm not like the guy who's like, well, you didn't buy that 50 feet of rope, so, you know, yeah. you don't have you don't have. Yeah. There's another thing that I've allowed that I picked up from, um, uh, what is it called? Into the Vast Dark, I think. Um, that game uses, like, slot-based encumbrance, mm, um, like but it's too. essentially, like, for... I think it ends up being like 10 silver because that's about as much as anything could cost that's reasonable. You can, for 10 silver, you can apply one encumbrance and give me a category of an item. And it is kind of a, a hammer space, like a smaller version of a pack where it's like, it's one item. And once you pick it, that's what it is. But until you pick it, it's kind of some nebulous item. So you're welcome to do that as well. Like fill an encumbrance with like dungeon, one encumbrance of dungeoneering. Yeah, and be like, okay, this is aha. Now it's it's ball bearings or whatever the fuck. Yeah, <laughs> the vast and the dark. That's what that module is called, or supplement. Yeah, I often I, like what... I, I often just ask myself, does this add anything to a game? Like, I'll probably do that, do more survival stuff with Marn when we do Temple of Elemental Evil. Because I think that's kind of part of like that what we're going for. But in general, mm -hmm. I like the of... idea of it. Kind of like sometimes I think, yeah, it just depends what you're what you're focusing on. If you're doing a survival game and you don't uh, you don't do that, then I guess you're kind of taking out the survival aspect. But if you're just going, hey, well, I'm just I just want to do adventuring stuff and kill monsters. It's like they can just yeah. weigh things down. It depends on the group too. Yeah, you know what totally. I mean? like, yeah. you know, it's just like I can't expect all my friends 
to necessarily want to keep track of fucking no I, and that's the thing too is i also <laughs> like same with with players depending on who is really like uh independent you might also realize oh shit i'm gonna have to fucking babysit the group if i do survival stuff because these three guys never like to do any of the hard stuff so then i'm going to do way like double the work so yeah, yeah the group totally matters as well also so buff coat is that like a nice like like got like a nice like muscle outline on it like, yeah it's the fake muscles yeah, yeah just there. like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it's, what uh, like Blades in the Dark, halberd, pretty much. Yeah, Blades does with like items where it's like each kind of character has like a list of items that they can have. Yeah. Um, but you don't choose what you have on you until you're like in the moment, and you kind of go yeah, into a situation. Pick you pick your load. Yeah, it's like you travel light, normal, or heavy, and that kind of influences like what you look like to other people. Like if you're yeah. rolling heavy, it's like, what the fuck are these people doing? You know what I yeah. mean? That's cool. Uh, and that's that's really cool. I, I mean, and I was a person that like almost never used like anything but like two items that I would bring out. You know, I'd bring out like daggers or, or whatever the fuck it was. You know, um, so that was always just cool not to have to think about it. I just... Or if you get hit, you know, it's like, oh, no, I was wearing armor. That's kind of how yeah. armor and yeah. stuff works in it, too. You know, it's like, well, but you already used your load up. You don't, you can't pull out armor. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't have it. <laughs> I decided to take the ranger slash archer uh, equipment pack, Jack. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, you're welcome to, like, swap out. Uh, Honestly, everything here to. pretty much works for what I what i was going for so it actually has more than i was expecting uh, are we tracking arrows and stuff um no don't worry about it <laughs> where are the equipment yeah, like packs? rations and water uh, that's 29 sort of page 29 torches oh. are we gonna uh, be tracking like torches yeah. and that sort so of thing? i will track torches because i think that okay. that's something that's worth doing in cool. in like dungeon crawly kind of stuff okay mm -hmm. of course there are plenty of ways to get around needing to do torches but yeah like just getting used to the dark stop being a pussy yeah. i mean if, if martin has the uh the like sense magic art that also allows you to see in the dark yeah yeah i like that because it's an explanation of like how the legacy works in this setting so again another thing that like kevin crawford was like look i'm just this is going to be a generic fantasy rpg like you can use whatever you want but i'm gonna put the coolest fucking setting that, like, that exists in one of these. <laughs> is the explanation for why magic works which is like again Sometime in the preceding billion years, billions of years of human history, it's described as something that is like there's like the the idea sometimes of like right like a, a persistent like nano swarm that exists everywhere, right? And how crazy that would be because it could save like everyone from dying at any given time, like stuff like that. Take that, like that level of technology that like nanobots are everywhere at all times and could like save you or heal you or something if something goes wrong. And imagine what the equivalent would be for somebody that has those. And that's what the legacy is. Like, that's how powerful and ingrained... Like, right, it's, it, you can't conceptualize what that would even be. Mm. And so it's the, it's the thing that drives magic. It is, it is technological, in a sense. But it is, it is your... Who is that? Um, Heinlein? No, I Heinlein. Know. <laughs> but the uh like you know magic uh sufficiently advanced technology is oh yeah Ar arthur magic. c clark yeah. i think clark clark yeah <laughs> it's that right where it is it is actually technology but it is literally magic in yeah the setting because what you're that. doing when you're yeah. casting a spell is you're doing the like all right i know like the snippet of code that i need to tell the legacy to do this thing for me um and what that happens to be of course is like an incantation right um like that. and that's how it works yeah, uh, which I think is really cool, but it also explains why it, it does a lot of explaining a way of like, well, why haven't people just developed like super high technology again? It's like, well, the legacy prevents that because there's some kind of safety measure or fail safe that thinks like, ah, people shouldn't be allowed to do that, and no one can disable it because I don't know how it works. Yeah, or like, well, why can like Aratus, which are like incursions of like other planes or like planets, like it's like almost absolute zero in this small pocket of <laughs> of the geography. How does like that? It's also a way to write put in like really crazy climates and small portions of your campaign. It's like, well, cool. you know, the legacy's broken there, and so it just allows that to happen. So cool stuff like that. That was one of my favorite explanations for why magic is what it is. It's it's really fun. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna buy is just some torches because I have some. I'm just gonna grab a a bundle of them, I guess. Um, yeah. Is it ten copper pieces to one silver piece? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. 
So I'll just yeah, this game also does work on silver standards, so gold yeah. is kind of uncommon. Yeah, so I'll just go. I'll spend one silver and just get uh, five torches. So I'm up to eight. That should be enough, for, at least for mine. <laughs> yeah, because I lost. So did we hour. start with with like silver? Uh, my pack did at least. I. Uh... Oh, okay. Right. Oh, some of the packs do, right? Yeah. So my yeah. my has. If you have something cheap, pack. you want to buy. Yeah. It's not fine. really. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could take Mage, Healer, or Scholar and have 80 silver pieces and just be fucking rolling in it. <laughs> Relatively rolling in it. <laughs> so do we get Clearly someone more? just needs to bring a grand hurla into long with them. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like a fucking, like, anti-materiel rifle. <laughs> it's actually more like a fucking emplaced, like, like armor, like, anti-armor weapon. But... That's cool. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, guns sort of exist in this. Um, they're just incredibly expensive, incredibly rare, and they're like your very early guns, where it's like, I fire it, and I put it down, because it's not going to be useful for <laughs> a, re a realistic period of time, because they take cool. 10 rounds to reload. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do I get two more spells because of my second level as well? Uh, you should get four total, I believe, or you get three at first level. I forget. Okay. Cool. Uh, let me double check. So, were these compendiums and everything? Were they just part of the uh, of the system on Foundry, or did you have to like? Yep. Uh, were the yeah? They these were. ones are wow, all. That's awesome. That's yeah, really cool. Sobrin is the guy who develops this. I, I think that's what he goes by on the uh, on the Discord. He's done a good job. Yeah, isn't this one based Definitely. off the old school? It's a lot of work. It is very heavily based off oh, OSD. Cool, At this point, cool. it's different enough that yeah. you wouldn't even really know by looking at it. He's also a couple a lot. Like this is actually it, better than it used to be by a pretty big way margin. better. Um, it's just so uh, nice a lot of stuff that was broken is fixed. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's really good. I this is uh, <laughs> I, I the I, I've I've gone these rants of wizard a lot, but this is why I get kind of annoying. People are like, uh, Foundry is so much work. It's like, man, I, you download two things. Like just. It took me 30 minutes just to learn, like, the the interface, and then I was, like, good to go. Like, it's really not that hard to get games going. I mean, on, on by comparison to... Yeah, like, uh, it's, you put... I basically probably would put more time into figuring out all the dumb bullshit of Roll20 that I have to, like, get around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and certain systems on Foundry are just, like, people have put a ton of work into them, and they're just nicely polished and just work and stuff like that. Yeah. Some systems, you gotta put more work into, for sure. But, oh, you know, de oh definitely. Well, especially the more obscure, like, the worst it is, but if you're somebody who's playing five-year Pathfinder, Foundry is just... It's easily... gotta be crazy. Yeah, well, my... my, right? my like, uh, well, like, Martin... It's all like, and... You can, like, automate the whole thing. Like, it's nuts, yeah. right? Like, it's, well, Mar Martin and Jack know him, but my buddy Steve, who uh, actually re only recently stopped playing 5e, was running a 5e game on Foundry for his friends, and, like, literally, he was importing entire campaigns. Like, he was running the... Um, uh, fucking the water deep heist one, and literally every yeah. map, every character, everything was all I had to do was just like basically one click import it all. And it's like it's all there for you. So like I don't know, I don't know how it gets any easier than that. Honestly, it's probably easier than actually yeah, having it in person. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, and like one company like Free League has put out like some stuff for like Alien and stuff like that, where they have like all the you know all the NPCs, all the pre gens, yeah. all the maps that's totally worth like price of like, oh absolutely i had like i had like prepped all that stuff and yeah. then it came out and i was like fuck it i'm buying this tonight. yeah no exactly like, it's just it's just more polished than yeah. what i did like. no <laughs> no the the um the forbidden lands for league one is honestly slightly breathtaking with how much they've added to it everything from like music to characters to maps to just you can just generate characters wow. on the fly with just one button like it, it is yeah, insane cool. the amount of work they've put into that. it like it's uh Actually, they put so much work into it. I was actually a little disappointed with the Vason one. Um, when I when I checked the Vason one, it was still really good. But I was just like, damn, this one definitely doesn't need, I guess, as much work because it's not as crunchy. But I was like, oh man, the Forbidden Lines was just so good. It's insane. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, Free League is awesome. Yeah, honestly. they're they're like they just make amazing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where's the so Martin? I know you get two when you advance a level. I'm yeah. struggling to find how many you start with. I know it's somewhere random. I'll be right back. <laughs> is there a is there a table of names in the book? Uh, there are example names for each um, each region um, because they're all broadly themed around different Certainly. places. Yeah, I might, I might look through one of those. For, uh... 
So you should ideas. use one of the fantasy online name generators, but on the condition that you have to pick, the, you have to go with the first one it comes up. <laughs> yeah. Why well, do, do, do that? I'll do that one. Like Let's, it or not. We'll just do it. All right. That's, that's fun. All right. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, Martin, you get four at first level, and you get two, at sec two additional at second level. Cool. And I will be right back as well. I have to say, I'm really getting into this. This is really good. It's cool. Huh? This is why I'm, I'm yeah. really excited for our yeah, game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin. It's going to be really, really good. <laughs> um, hmm. Ooh, Fursona name sale. Let's go with that. Uh, let's see here. There's so many different... There's so many different generators to choose from in the... Like, the, the fancy generator one. The Like, the main one that has, like, the blue background. It's just so many. Yeah. What, there's a category called non-magic user names. That, that is such a ambiguous... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that one just because I have no idea what that means. Okay. Uh all right, looks like my name is Voids. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a nickname. <laughs> does. What we got? Yeah, oh we got Voids, Orthos. The last one's Weirdos, which is pretty good. Um <laughs> Blanks, Oddies, Mundanes. Actually, you know what? The third one down, abnorms. I like that one. I'm gonna go with that. It's like abnormal, but yeah. abnorms. A Abby normal. <laughs> yeah, Abby normal. <laughs> <laughs> it is I, Abby normal. <laughs> abnorms is just stupid. <laughs> I, I thought it was actually a category of names. Abnorms. I think I think it is. Now that I look at it, I was like, oh, it's just a category. <laughs> but you know what? I'll go. I'll go with abnorms. That's uh, we made the, we made the deal. I I, I changed it just mm. a bit. I take the third one down, but we. So we did. I, I, there was a category. There was a category, uh, Dan, that that said non magic user names, and I was like, "What the fuck does that mean?" Like, it, I get. What does that <laughs> yeah. mean? So I just clicked on that to see it. And so there was voids, abnorms, weirdos. I was like, "All right, whatever. I'll just go with." It. <laughs> oh shit! That's so you chose a category name. Yeah, you should have called yourself weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least abnorms is weird enough that it could, I could see that being somebody's that name in the is far a name. future. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Weirdos is just like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, norm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Norm becomes abnorm in the future. This book is really nice too. I like the, I like its its vibe. Yeah, I'll have to pick it up. I've been interested in stars without numbers in the past as well yeah, yeah i'm thinking about grabbing that just because my main group wants a wants a wants a sci-fi game at some point dan so i'm thinking about grabbing it just to just to get that yeah at Have this fun. point it's like man I, I like between alien is something i wouldn't really run like necessarily a campaign with but mothership you definitely could and mothership yeah. has some like longer kind of kind of stuff too mm -hmm. with like gradient descent i'd, I'd love to run that as yeah. well uh, for you guys, if you're ever interested in some mothership, yeah. but then I just picked up this thing, uh, Death in Space, just because yeah. it looked really, it looked really cool. Yeah, <laughs> I saw a people. I saw, I saw. Is that from Free League? Who made that? I can't remember. Um... Uh, it's uh, Stockholm Cartel did it actually. Okay, and Free okay. League. Yep, Free League Workshop. It's it's kind of yeah. So they probably worked. Maybe they published as... it or or gave some money to them or something. They're one of like four publishers that's kind of credited on the back. Yeah, I'm assuming they probably just made an investment or something. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of people with that one, and uh, that one looked really cool. I didn't uh, like so many things. I have to pick my battles on what I'm gonna back because eventually it's just like I, I'm gonna. I'm already at the point where I have too much stuff for what I'm feasibly gonna ever run. You know, so I gotta be. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of trying to like concentrate on like what do I actually like want to run? Yeah. like in the future yeah. and for who? And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was saying oh, my bike. It's easier in. to focus on a couple systems. Exa because, exactly. Know, I'm not good with. The, I need to play things to like yeah. remember the. Rules. I'm the exact I'm same like reading way. Reading a book, it just, I, it doesn't. Yeah. Like it does not sink it. I also. So there's, yeah. There's some <laughs> people like focus. Jack who just enjoy sitting down and reading a book and like looking at the mechanics. And I'm not like that. Like I reading the learn the rules is really like just the pain it's work for me to, yeah to yeah. yeah to get to the actual game that's fun but like some people sit down and just love reading mechanics that's why my buddy tim whenever we play board games i just give him the rule book and i'm like here you learn the rules and you explain to me once we start playing and we'll uh, i'll get into it that way <laughs> yeah. i just cannot <laughs> yeah. it takes so that's long for me to read rules um 
I actually had PT explain to me the magic system in this game, because I, like, whenever I see a magic subsystem, I always just get, like, except for DCC, just because of how easy it was to read and how crazy it was, every other game, whenever I see the magic part, I just go, like, <sighs> I don't want to deal with this right now. I'll just move on to something else, and I'll come, I'll come, I'll circle back to magic, but, uh, this one's, this one has really cool magic, it's just very, I guess, complex at first, but yeah, I'm just bad at reading rules. Yeah, I'm the same way. The first few sessions uh, of a new system are always very rocky for me. Yeah. I, I got to the point now where I don't mind just making stuff on the fly, but definitely, I definitely feel bad for people who are stickler for rules and they play with me, because a lot of times I'll just go like, yeah, I know you care about the rules, but like, <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, this thing this thing works. That's all I need. That's, uh... <laughs> We're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. Before it says you can't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've been saving two points up just for this time when I can... Yeah. yeah. It's funny, too, because, like, my basic rule is that if you do want to use... Like, if you want to bring the book out and you want to bring up a rule, you need to have that book out on the page. Like, when you're telling me that's what the rule is. Like, if you're going, like, let me just yeah. take the book. I'm like, nope, we're not doing that. I'm not I'm not bringing this fucking game to, like, a screeching halt so that we can find what rule is. We're just going to... We're going to roll this. Right. It's gonna be sometimes fine. it might be a situation where you're like, okay, the actual rule, like, okay, that's yeah. fair. I'll do and and, that. and the, yeah. the actual rule usually is better. It's just that, like, I don't want to slow a game down. Like, the, the example I always think of is that uh, PT, when you burn 20 luck in DCC, you automatic crit. PT had the book open when she brought that up and said, like, hey, like, yeah. this is the rule, uh, which it was yeah. a rule I already knew anyway, so it didn't, it, that one I was going to be fine with, but it was just like, oh, cool, that's how I want. Don't tell me, I think there's a rule about this, and then you have to go find it in a giant 600-page book. I I absolutely hate that so much. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> yep, yep. I can't stand looking at a book when I'm GMing either. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, uh, just it's, like, so yeah. stressful to me. I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping pages back. Back and forth, and it happens. You know, it's gonna happen, but yeah. it's just like uh, <laughs> fucking anxiety. <laughs> you could do worse. You could try and create a magic user during a Twitch stream with a rule set you've never seen before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why I didn't choose magic user. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, eh, oh, it's not that complicated. Yeah. You could have done like half mage, half uh, yeah, one of the uh, the deluxe book. I think yeah, I think if it was a different classes. GM than Jack, like if it was me, I would probably yeah. be like, oh, we might want to check ahead of time. But Jack knows the game really well, so I feel like it's less of a big. If you have a GM who knows that's it, it's less of a nice big deal. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's good. So there's another Worlds Without Number book. Yeah, it's being kickstarted. It's Atlas mm -hmm. of the Lighter Earth. Um, a lot of it is focused around like um, the setting that's laid out in here, the like dying earth setting. Uh, yeah. Like I think it, it's pretty much it encompasses the whole Western Hemisphere. So it's the Americas. Oh, cool! So it's a lot. It's Atlantic. lore, mostly lore and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Or a not good lore, chunk of its lore, lore, like generating places yeah. in that setting. The gotcha. other half of it is like um, expanding out a lot of optional rules, like to make if you're running in like a, a gunpowder setting, like that you want guns to be common. Uh, there's um, ship combat and sailing rules. Um, there's a system that I'm really excited for, which is character tags, which is so the tag system we talked about earlier, which is good for generating like uh, locations and stuff. It's one for NPCs. So imagine being like, oh, I need like this NPC cool. for this court or something and being like, all right, let's roll up two character tags. What do we got here? Like, what's their deal? Like, what does this make them good at? What does it make them bad at? Cool. Like, so I'm really excited for that. You yeah, actually have, yeah, let me I see. Like I have the PDF and I can, I know there's more in it than that. Oh, right. It's got a, an expanded bestiary that has some real nasty monsters <laughs> in it. Um, there's uh, a bunch of optional rules like low and no magic campaigns, predator firearms. There's new classes and foci that are all really cool. Yeah. Um, naval adventuring, character tags, yeah. The classes, there's a bunch of martial styles that remind me, if anybody played uh, 3.x, the Tome of Battle... With all the really cool, like, alternate, uh... It, it made, like, traditionalists real mad, because, like, this is pretty much spells for marshals. Uh, and it's like, right. yeah, it's cool as hell, and it's also really <laughs> stupid. A lot of it <laughs> <super> <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's all kickstarting right now, so I think it has, like, a couple weeks left to go. Yeah, the, um... 
I don't know who does the art for it or if it's like AI generated, but it literally looks like a CRPG I wish existed. Like the yeah. the that mm. art with like was like of like that that stone statue, like the person. I'm like, oh my god, I want this like in a game. That'd be really cool. Yeah, it's like simultaneously kind of generic and really evocative. Yeah, because there's nothing that like screams, "This is worlds without number," but it's no. like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a total sucker for art. Oh, uh, God, yeah. I think it's also more yeah. important than the content of your book to get people in. Like, there's so many people who have just backed, like, I think everybody's backed stuff that just has good art. And, I, like, you read it, and you're like, oh, this is actually, like, not <laughs> not that great. It, it's fine, but the art really is what's, what maybe you fucking I, buy it. I totally, like, Simba Room, like, I totally bought that based on art alone. Now, I do like that the one setting, cool, actually, though. but uh, yeah. it is cool. It is cool. But uh, I'm like, man, this art is, is fucking yeah. next level. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it's cool when there's like one artist that kind of cons- consistently like yeah. just create a, a setting. I think the same dude does like the Coriolis stuff as well. Oh, okay, which yeah, is also, which is yeah. also pretty cool. I love the Forbidden yeah. Lands art. They, I, honestly, I think I I yeah. backed the uh, Beasts of Blood March. I think whatever their book that's been it's been sort of delayed a bit, but like all the art the in that. League art is it's is uh, it's so top notch. It's stuff. so good. yeah. Alien is yeah. great. Ta- yeah. Tales from the Loop. Obviously, that's like that whole thing is based on artwork. Pretty yeah, much, yeah, you know. So it's like their great. layout's amazing too. Yeah. Like I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys grabbed the One Ring, but like the inside, just like just like the book itself. I did It's so nice. It's it's crazy good. Um, and the book Art's itself is now, just is, gorgeous. Is the One Ring is their Tolkien? Uh, is yes. their Lord of the Rings one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, it look it looks pretty cool. Yeah. I still haven't unwrapped mine. I still need yeah. to open the damn thing. I got it, like right here. But, like, <laughs> look at this book, Dan. It is just like oh, wow. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. like so nice. <laughs> and like the insides the just look really exactly cool. like they should. Like it's hard to show on the camera, but like basically it's just like really nice. Just got like the really beautiful token look to it so i yeah. definitely watched like a flip through or something i don't yeah. know if it was like questing beast or one of those guys but yeah, yeah. uh cool stuff for sure yeah. absolutely there's alchemy rules in here too for mundane alchemy oh, wow mm. that's fun i love that sort of stuff yeah and then there's some cool. new classes you got the bard and mage slayer which i mentioned earlier which i'm matt's running right now in our art yeah. vol game uh, the Wise, which is like a lower magic setting kind of wizarding type. Cool. Um, and then there's all the a bunch of new foci, a lot of which are the Makatban Knight foci, which are warrior like st- fighting styles that are really really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a you like a all directions edge. Uh, you've exchanged a portion of your life force to master techniques of unbridled violence. Your hit die is penalized by two points, so if you normally roll a d6 plus two, you now roll a d6. If you take this focus after, decrease two points per level. You gain a combat skill as a bonus skill. As an on-turn action, you may make a normal non-grappling attack once per, once per round. You just get an extra attack. Yep. Um, and the first time you use it, uh, after the first time, it takes a system strain every time you want to do it. So system strain is a system by which um, healing usually applies system strain, and once that's filled up, you cannot be healed unless I think uh, magical healing doesn't always do it. There are some ways to not, but and it only goes it's fixed to go down at a rate of one per day. So if your system strain is full and you're hurt, eh, tough shit. <laughs> you can heal. Yeah, like uh, yeah, once per day is a main action attack. Every enemy within range once. Mm. This includes. Ranged weapons, but the max is six targets. What? That's mental. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, Pyre of Heaven, which is um, ignore the first five points of fire or heat uh, you get in any round damage. Um, you can spend a system strain to ignite your weapon, fist, or ammunition for the rest of the <laughs> oh round. Oh my god. <laughs> And while ignited, it gains damage, die, and shock bonus. A bonus to each equal to character level plus two, which is awesome. Then there's like some cooler ones that are like um, one where you can you essentially live in your armor. Um, you get an extra AC, and your armor has zero encumbrance. Um, it's like a part of you, like you can't yeah, take it off type of thing? You and your armor remain clean and well-maintained short of magical befouling. Um, 
And then the level two is, while armored, you need not eat, drink, sleep, or breathe, and you're immune to normal climatic ranges of heat or cold. Oh my god. Oh, that's cool. That's really it's cool. super cool. That's like the most like comfortable person ever. I'd love that. That's, that's like, really like evocative, yeah. too, to me. Like, it, it, yeah. To me, it, I would see that as like, it's like a symbiotic sort of, like, it's almost like a creature yeah, exactly. or something like that. Like, yeah. That's sweet. It's really cool. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's, there's neat stuff. Like, one of them is totally focused around um, protecting allies. Because, like, there's a, a cool skill in this game that I really like, which is great. Um, so, if in the... Uh, I have a, a handout in the, uh, the notes part of the journal that's the combat quick reference, which shows the two pages, and they're split into what kind of action they are. Screen an ally you can use as your move action. Which means enemies have to make a check if they want to attack that person. Otherwise, they have to attack you. So it's great if you have a mage, because if the mage gets hit, they're not allowed to cast that round. So you can use screen and ally. It doesn't. A lot of games, it's like you have to use your attack, your main action, to do that. And so it's like cool. Well, I can sit here and yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> and then if you don't get hit, like if no one tries to hit him, it's like cool. I wasted my turn. This yeah. one, it's like if I'm already standing next to him. I'm screening. And there's yeah. already a, a foci that, that makes that even better. But it's really good. No, I, I, love, uh, I love that shit. I, any, anything, like, I'm at the point now, anything that I find that's like, oh, this just takes out the, un, like, the dissatisfaction I get from certain aspects of games, that's like, yeah, yeah. things I just steal now from everything. That's, I think that's great. Yeah, yeah Wrathful great. Mountain is like, you can manifest a zero encumbrance magical large shield as an instant action, even if both of your hands are occupied. Um, once per round, when someone makes a melee attack on someone you've screened, you get to instantly attack them back before their attack completes. <laughs> so if you murder them before they attack, they don't even get to attack. Nice. And then you can you can do it against ranged people as uh, as the level two one, which is super cool. I'm just gonna go around using the shatter shield main action on everybody. Just gonna keep. It's good. Gonna... So the other thing uh, that shields do notably that is not necessarily obvious is they negate the first uh, instance of shock that you yeah. take in a given round do you want to explain so, shock uh, jack yeah so shock is um it's typically applied mm -hmm. per weapon and what shock is is assuming that your ac is at or lower than the shock value of a weapon it is automatic damage that you take in that case so like if you if, if the, the target's enemy, ac yeah yeah, yeah yeah so even if you miss let's say like you have a weapon that's two shock ac 15 and you're hit, you're swinging at an enemy with 13 ac um and you miss well their ac is lower than the shock value on your weapon they automatically take that damage no matter what they take the Love chip it. essentially yeah. from that um the good thing with the shock also does is it sets the minimum amount of damage you can do with that weapon you can if you roll lower than the shock value of your weapon you take the shock instead it's just so cool. I love that so much. Which is great. Like, there's nothing worse than being the guy with, like, the D12 battle axe. Yeah. And hitting and doing, like, one damage. Yeah, it's the it's worst. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of minimal damage, for yeah. sure. I think yeah. that's something I want to work into most things I play. Yeah, no. Yeah. Especially in, like, OSR combat, where it's, like, enemies might have 10 hit points or something. Yeah. And it's, like cool if you're auto damaging for two around it, it gets rid of the like all right we're level one miss yes miss. Yeah. Miss. yeah even if you miss yes. you're still doing you're still making progress probably. something yeah. you're making a progress yeah to getting, like through that yeah you know? exactly yeah. that makes yeah sense. and then like it, it also it it does a good thing which is making warriors better because they get to add um what is it half their character level uh rounded i think it's one of the only things that rounds yeah it rounds up uh, to shock so like as a level two you automatically your shock always goes up by one if you're level 10 you're doing weapon plus five plus anything else <laughs> shock per round nice. so it's like yeah mean, you can kind of have that wade through like a group of weak enemies yeah. kind yeah. of a thing and so if you have like a shock 18 weapon or something it's like cool i'm just eviscerating every one hit die guy that yeah. i attack this round automatically <laughs> that's without rolling that's damage. cool yeah. it also makes uh yeah. combat though extra scary though because now shock is a thing on us as well which is just like oh so yeah. any comic yeah. we go into there's a high chance we can all just die <laughs> yeah. and there is a very scary action that you can have enemies take as the gm and you should for that matter because it makes sense which is make a swarm attack which yes. is up to four people can essentially hold to attack somebody and it gives a big bonus to hit Ooh. and to damage and it it, yeah. it over it pretty much lets you go 
over their AC and then do auto auto damage. Yeah. So that's yeah. cool. Now is that a thing that like PCs could do as yep. well? You like, can also take. Oh, that's attack. awesome. I like yeah. that. I like like group for actions for things, especially yeah. in like combat and shit, where like one roll can. I, I'm cool with like a roll or two deciding a combat. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. And, yeah, and no, just I, being like, make it all like cinematic and and that sort of thing. Certain games kind of lend itself. Well, I, I mean, the thing is, is, I either want cinematic or we're doing tactics. And with tactics, I just want to play video games. I just think video games do tactics better personally at this at this point. Like, if, I mean, if you're doing like the five year Pathfinder thing, but like, so I much prefer faster, snappier combats that are more like cinematic and yeah. crazy. Yeah. You just get yeah. really really rough really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there's nothing worse than just yeah. a dragged out combat that takes like two hours where everybody's either missing or it's just like very slowly bleeding out, you know? So Oh, it's it's the missing that's the It's the worst. Isn't it? It's yeah. it's just not fun. No, I've just waited yes. ten minutes and nothing happens. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's so rough. Yeah. Alright, let's roll D twenty plus one. D twenty <laughs> plus one. Yeah. Oh, eight and a six. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to read my book until it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you can be like Dan, just fucking immediately auto kill, like the main bad guy, and like <laughs> in the literally first action of the combat. <laughs> if I'm like GMing that, though, I'm like, oh, good. Yeah, no, 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 me too. I, I was I was so happy because I'm so fucking lazy. I was like, thank God I don't yeah. deal with all his fucking stats I to, now. I don't have to think about Yeah, because he had like yeah. spells and extra abilities and extra actions. Like, you know what? He's dead now. Cool. All right. I don't have to worry about that now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, shit. We just want to like uh, wrap up. I guess it's already. Yeah. Yeah, we're like well, not too far off of when we would normally uh, finish Jeez. up anyway. Um, describe some characters. I can I can give a, a quick description that I'll repeat at the beginning of, of the next session yeah. Yeah. as to how you got here, um, which is a fairly scummy thing to do because it's actually... So the adventure we'll be running um, is one that I've kind of half-written at this point. I mean, I've, I've run it before um, as the, the intro for uh, the first campaign of this that I ran, um, and it has a working title of The, uh, the Secret of the Pinched Cistern. Hmm. Um, and uh, I'm going to take the setup and apply it. It is what the characters in that party decided they do, they did, which is real shitty, which is uh, <laughs> one of them was in an arranged marriage uh, and didn't want to be. And so one of them was uh, a knight of the golden order, or a, uh, a member of the golden path, which is like one of the religions in the, in the setting. Um, they swiped an artifact um, shoved the the arranged marriage guy into a stolen funeral palanquin and carried him out of the city in it, fenced the artifact, and hightailed it out to Kaadun. <laughs> so just committed some, like, moderate blasphemy. Uh, and <laughs> then uh, fenced a religious artifact and fuck off. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's great. And they ran, ran out of money right on the edge of uh, on the edge of the new city on on the fringe. Perfect. So uh, do we want to? Yeah, I guess uh, start with. I guess we'll go in order on Twitch or on uh, Discord. Yep. Start with Dan. Just kind of describe your character. Okay. If you get any cool visual stuff? Yeah, yeah. Like. Rolo uh, is uh, kind of like a. He was raised by a group of assassins, like a League of Assassins sort of a group. And uh, they kind of trained him in various things. Uh, but when he got to kind of his first, like, this is, you're going to kill somebody now, he wasn't really crazy about killing the target. He was like, eh, he's more of a free thinker. Um, so through a series of circumstances, I think that, with the help of his target, they were able to make it look like they had both perished in this encounter. And so <laughs> now he's kind of like conspired with his target to leave this League of Assassins. And uh, he's just kind of a, a love and life sort of guy. <laughs> um, he's kind of greedy, uh, but he's real friendly and kind of like, hey, how's it going? Let's all be friends. <laughs> and uh, he's also very murderous and deadly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of his deal. That's good. Martin? So, um, Jacketh Swift Tatand, he's a, uh, what's the right word? A rotund um, merchant mage, we're going to call him. <laughs> and um, a lot of mages are, are kind of into the whole, you know, look at me, I'm fucking brilliant kind of thing. 
shit coming from my fingers, that sort of thing, going to blow something up. This guy's more subtle. So he's primarily a merchant. He's a, he's a trader. Um, and he likes to use his magic in very sort of subtle and devious ways. So it might be that you don't see something that you should see because, I don't know, you just kind of blipped out there for a minute. Um, or you might find yourself doing something that you, you wouldn't normally do, you know, maybe buying something you shouldn't or, or selling something you shouldn't for a price that's ridiculous. Um, and there might be more to it than that. And and, and that's how Jacketh likes to, to use, his, uh, use his magic. He's a manipulative. I can't talk today. A manipulative little bastard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. Worry, I'll, I'll edit that out for you, Martin. I'll. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You like do the thing where it's like he goes, the and then it zooms in. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I was half. I was half <laughs> just, thinking of doing that, Jack. <laughs> just repeating it. Yeah, over just repeating it ten times, just on yeah, slow mo. Just, don't worry, I'll edit that out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Um, yeah, and I can go. Um, yep. So, uh, I'm playing as Abnorms, um, and I don't know if you care if I attach myself to you at all, uh, Martin, but uh, Abnorms is a, is a bit of a, a swindler, a bit of a con man, um, very much sets traps both socially and literally, and I feel like he's uh, been very useful with, with uh, Jacketh in terms of... Uh, Maybe, maybe making deals or working together, you know, maybe both of us sort of pretend again to fight each other to, uh, you know, maybe perhaps uh, move a certain deal in a certain way or working together to see sort of things. Um, he's absolutely a slimy, cowardly bastard. Um, doesn't necessarily like he has killed. He doesn't exactly want to do that as the first thing. He will try and get out of that. Um, but in general, is always looking to make some extra coin, especially right now with how fucking broke he is. Probably the broke as he's been in a while. Um... And generally not a trustworthy person. And I feel like most people look at him and go, I don't want to trust that guy. He just looks disgusting. And uh, yeah, that's Abnorms. Also, his name's Abnorms, so it's, which is already just like a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, I think I know who was carrying the stolen palanquin and who was in it in this case. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like maybe uh, Rollo was uh, contracted to kill Jack, and they were like, oh, we don't have to do this. Yeah. Like... <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I love that. I love that yeah. idea. Oh, it's cool. I'll grab the like the hand of this saint. We can pawn it once we get out of New Vaughn. Yeah. It'll be perfect. Get out of head here. Head up to Cotton. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the yellow ships across the carceral sea. We'll be out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 No, I definitely feel with Rollo, it's definitely, Abnors is always sort of, I guess, like, commenting you, definitely, like, greasing the wheels a little bit. It would be like, oh, yeah, like, we need a big fighter like you, you know, we just, we're just like, we're just two innocent merchants who need your help with uh, this or that, yeah. Um, well, plus, at this point, Jacketh can't stay there because they're just going to send another fucking assassin. Yeah, exactly. It's just, let's just like, come on, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that all right, great. We'll pick up uh, next time uh, on on the fringe uh, yeah. with your your quest giver, uh, ready to to get right into it. Perfect. Sounds good. Fuck yeah. All awesome. right. Yeah. So thanks to everybody who uh, stopped by. Um, so we'll be playing this the second session um, and the final session uh, next Sunday. Um, and for everybody else who's regular viewers, I might be streaming later tonight, and also tomorrow will be mini Monday with uh, John and perhaps Jack if he stops by. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, and this will also, if you end up wanting to come back to this, this will be an edited version of this. will go up on the YouTube channel probably within the week or next week, depending on how, how busy I get. But yeah, thanks so much. And thanks a lot, guys. I'm, I'm really excited for this. This is really fun. I'm, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, looking yeah, forward to this. <laughs> to our little exploit here. <laughs>